Greetings guys, it's Jurgis. Hopefully you guys are doing well. My last video I shared with you about my trip going back to uh, Manathos for Pascha and I received some word from a number of you asking, well, how do you go about doing that? How do you go to Manathos? So uh, this is gonna be my third time. Um, the first two times I, I went alone. And so I would definitely encourage you if you're by yourself, you're like, you know, you prefer not to travel alone, I'd say, you know, do it because I uh, went and I believed that, that God would place people in my pathways that otherwise I may not have paid attention to if I was with someone else and I was richly blessed by it. And I, I share with you these blessings in some of my, uh, my videos, my first one and my second one. So I would say if you don't have someone to go with, don't let that be a distraction for you. And if you do, uh, great, but also, you know, look for opportunities in which um, you meet new people and you have other experiences as well and you get outside your safety net on that. And so this video will give you a little bit of snapshot on what I would suggest you do. Now, the first thing um, you need to do is decide when you want to go. Now, when um, I first went, I was a Protestant and the research I had done told me that I needed to reach out as soon as possible as a limited non-Orthodox to somewhere from 10 to 15 a day. You're given a blessing to be there for three days, and so over a three-day period, you've got anywhere from 30 to 42 non-Orthodox on the entire Mount Athos. So you wanna kind of plan ahead. And so what you wanna do is uh, send an email and with a copy of your passport uh, to Athos Reservation at gmail.com. Now, I'm a thrifty guy and I am thrifty. I could pretty much, you know, sleep in any kind of accommodations and eat and, and travel. And so I would say that um, you wanna go inexpensive on this. And so if you're from North America, Canada, United States, I would say if you can get the Thessaloniki um, direct through like an American Airlines, who they have a connection or a partnership with British Airs, and it's not too expensive, then of course, I would say do that. However, if you're running across some really high prices, I would say that your um, motivation should be to get to Europe as inexpensively as you can. And again, if you're traveling by yourself, this makes it easy to do this. So go ahead and do that. And then once you get into Europe, whether it's Ryanair or the other uh, low cost airlines in Europe, then you can go ahead and try to get to Thessaloniki and you'll be amazed how inexpensive it is. Uh, well, the second time I did that, I actually went into England again because I went to uh, the Monastery of St. John the Baptist in Essex and stayed a couple of days there. I uh, received a, a blessing to be there for a couple of days and it was wonderful. So maybe you wanna do that. I would not suggest if you make it to Thessaloniki that you rent a car, because I don't think you're gonna need a car. Thessaloniki is a wonderful city. Um, it's an industrial um, city, as Athens is, very touristy. You know, Thessaloniki is very working, very um, commercial, but has a lot of artifacts as well, has a beautiful boardwalk. Um, and so it's, it's a beautiful city. So. Once you get into Thessaloniki, um, go ahead and you can, if you're going right away to Mount Athos, um, you wanna take the bus number uh, 79 from the airport, and that'll take you to a bus area that uh, I guess is it's known as the Ikea area. There's a big, a bunch of um, bus transfer area in that place. And so once you get there, you, know, you can ask somebody, you know, how to get to Mount Athos, where, where to go. Um, but um, I believe it's bus number 36. So once you get to that Ikea parking lot or bus station, you look for, they're all numbered. It's a very large area and they have numbers throughout. Look for number 36. And that will take you to something that's called like a KTEL, you know, kind of bus stop. That's the, the, the main bus stop to get to about Athos. And I think you'll notice that right away because you'll see a lot of uh, monastics there. Um, it's not a very big bus station, but you'll see a lot of... Uh, uh, fathers uh, there, uh, monastics. And so I think they have up to five or six uh, buses a day that leave um, this uh, KTEL bus area to go to um, Oronopoli. Uh, we want to go from Manathos or Oronopoli is where the ferry takes off. And I think they start as uh, early as 5.30 
um, in the morning. So you could make it to this bus area, get a ticket and make it in time for the ferry uh, to get to uh, Manathos. And so if you wanna go inexpensively, I would suggest that's how I did it, okay? Once you get there, you're gonna to want to find the, uh, the office for Mount Athos, and you'll be given a, um, a document like this. And it tells you your name, tells you your denomination, and it's anywhere from 25 to 35 euros. You pick this up. And so it's what you need. So if you were to run down to the ferry for the 9.30 or so ferry, and you don't have this, they'll send you back to the office because that happens. Um, so if you get distracted, the ferry will make sure you have it. And then you'll pay the ferry um, uh, to make it to uh, Port Daphne, which is roughly in the center of the peninsula. And they stop um, along monasteries along the way. Now, once you have your permission to, uh, to come to Mount Athos before you get your document there, then you'll go ahead and you'll reach out to different monasteries and skeets now, there, there are legally, or I don't know, legally is the right word to use for Mount Athos, but there are only 20 monasteries that are allowed in Mount Athos. Um, and there are some skeets that are technically supposed to be smaller than monasteries, but in a case like of St. Anne's, it, it's bigger than some of the monasteries, of the 20. And so you'll want to go ahead and uh, reach out to, at that point, the monasteries, and you stay one night um, for three, and you pick the ones that you want uh, or they have an opening for, and then you can um, then plan where you'll get off um, along the way. You know, if it's um, Pantaleman or Helendar, you know, the, the ferry, it's one of the first stops along the way before you get to Port Daphne. If it's not one of the first monasteries, then you'll go to Port Daphne, and then you'll get accommodations there, whether it's van, bus, what have you. Or, as in my case, you could walk. Hopefully this is helpful to you. Um, I will link some uh, addresses, web addresses below so that if you get to the point of getting your blessing to go to Manathos, uh, then you can maybe more easily reach out uh, to the monasteries. And some areas, some of the monasteries are really like, uh, maybe you have to call them. And in the other areas, some of the more popular ones are more advanced with websites now that are exclusive to uh, receiving their blessing. Again, I would encourage you to go to Mount Athos. Uh, I would encourage you not to allow um, nervousness or anxiety about what to expect keep you from doing it. Pray, bring your prayer rope, pray during this entire trip, and I think that God will place in your path people that upon reflection you'll uh, bring glory to God and thank Him for the trip, and you'll have uh, been blessed immensely. So hopefully this is helpful and I'll talk to you on the next Orthodox Gardener.